Hey, Mitch, hope you're doing well. Um, obviously kind of a different challenging season with all the different circumstances. How would you evaluate how the team did kind of primarily from maybe an internal development standpoint this year, given the limited practices, limited G League, things of that nature? Well, before I answer, um, yes, it's been a, a very unique and challenging season, you know, with the, excuse me, health and safety protocol, uh, dealing with, you know, the testing, you know, the COVID, the short, shortened season, um, you know, more games per week, uh, testing at all hours and not consistent. You know, sometimes they were in the morning, sometimes they were at night, sometimes before games, sometimes after games. I mean, just keeping track, you know, players adjusting, adapting, you know, their schedule, trying to get sleep. You know, sometimes they had to come back at 11 o'clock at night and get a test. Um, and then they had to be up in the morning and get here at eight and get a test. And as an athlete who travels through different time zones, you know, you don't know when you're going to fall asleep and you don't know when you're going to wake up. Um, but to kind of have that dictated by, you know, the testing, it, it's, a, it's unique and it's tough. It really was. And I think our staff, our coaches, players, um, our medical, they did a great job of, of managing and navigating their way through you know, through the season. And the NBA did a great job as well. You know, it looks like, you know, with certainty, they're going to complete a season and, you know, have a very, very exciting uh, playoff series. So having said that, one, one more time on the question so I get it right. Um, just with all those circumstances that you just outlined, how would you evaluate the team's internal growth this year, given that you guys didn't have a whole lot of practice time, you didn't really have a normal G League season and dealing with everything in a compressed schedule nonetheless? Right. Well, we didn't have the draft until November. And, you know, the draft was one week and basically there was free agency the next week. And then soon thereafter, we were in training camp, you know, for an abbreviated training camp, uh, the rookies, you know, hardly played at all in training camp. And then we started the season. We had a couple of preseason games and you're, and you're right into it. So very little practice time during the season. Uh, thank God for the uh, bubble, you know, for the G league in Atlanta. I think that really helped, you know, our, our young players, certainly Lamelo, you know, played for us this year and played quite a bit and, you know, there's no better development than playing in an NBA game uh, or practice. But for those players that, that didn't get to practice, you know, going to Atlanta was huge. And that was a big plus. Our coaches also did a great job once the bubble in Atlanta ended um, of not only managing the veterans and the season and a normal practice uh, travel schedule, but they did a great job continuing to develop our young players before games, you know, getting them uh, workouts on the court, uh, playing five on five. You know, a lot of times we had six or five players and we had to come up with five other players and we had video guys out there. We had assistant coaches out there going up and down the court, you know, playing five on five just so you know, the rookies and the guys that didn't play much, at least at the beginning of the season, you know, guys like Jalen and the Martin brothers, you know, even they were doing it. So everybody made a huge sacrifice, you know, to get through the season. And what we did is really no different than what any other NBA team did. So, um, you know, without getting too carried away on it, you know, everybody in this league is to be commended you know, to how they handle themselves, you know, under the direction of the NBA. I did see uh, growth um, amongst all our players across the board. Um, you know, of course, LaMelo had great growth. And then, of course, his injury, you know, set him back and, you know, coming back right in the midst of a season with a couple of games to go um, was a challenge that he was eager for. Um, I don't want to go through every player because you always, you know, leave somebody out, but I thought miles, you know, really made tremendous growth um, of our young players. I think the Martin brothers gave us, you know, what we expected them to give us. I think Jalen, 
you know, uh, made a step up. Um, I don't think anybody made a step or took a step backwards. So I think there was tremendous growth across the board. And in general, you know, without looking at the last two weeks of the season, which you really can't discount, okay? But in general, I think as an organization, we took a big step forward this year. Thank you. Rick? Mitch, what do you view as this team's primary needs in the, this coming off season? Well, we have to sort our way through the, you know, free agent uh, process, you know, with our existing free agents. Rick, as you know, you know, both of our uh, centers, you know, are free agents. Um, Devante is also a free agent. Malik is a free agent. Um, you know, Brad Wanamaker is a free agent. Um, so we have to sort, you know, our way through, you know, that minefield, so to speak. Um, it's way too early. We have not, you know, started the process. And, you know, some of those players are unrestricted free agents. So, you know, we're not going to have much say if they decide to do something different. Um, of course, keeping in mind that both of our centers are free agents and they're both unrestricted free agents, which means we really can't, you know, control the, the board, so to speak. Um, and just looking at some of our needs in general, I think you could say that we have to look to, you know, shore up our front court, you know, with, you know, a center or several centers that can, you know, do the things that those guys can do. I don't know if you can find one guy to do it all, but you'd love to get some rim protection, some better rebounding. Um, that sort of thing. Um, and then, what, like I said, you know, we've do got free agents in the backcourt. So depending upon how that plays out, we may need some help in the backcourt. Um, we expect everybody, you know, when we start training camp in September to be at 100%. And that's the good thing about, you know, our situation right now with the injuries, all the injuries, you know, everybody is gonna get well and they should be 100%. So in a lot of ways, I think we're good at a lot of positions and I think our future is bright. Um, but our margin of error this year was really not that large that we could sustain you know, multiple injuries and expect to get through the season and to be able to compete at the same level at the end of the season. You know, there were fatigue issues, you know, losing a player like Gordon uh, to some degree, um, Cody, you know, Martin, of course, with Devante, you know, missing 17 games. Um, you know, that was an adjustment. Um, and then, of course, losing LaMelo for five or six weeks, you know, it's a lot for a team that I think out of the block, you know, probably overachieved and delivered more than we expected. And I think that was great. It created some excitement and um, provided for great, great, great growth across the board. But when you lose, you know, guys like number one, your best player, uh, Gordon Haywood, you know, for the season. Um, and everybody else has to step up. And keeping in mind our margin was not that good to begin with. Uh, yeah, we would have preferred to have, you know, a softer landing, you know, for the last two weeks of the season. But in a lot of ways, I don't think it was unexpected. What is your working number as far as cap room? Well, we expect the cap to prov provide us with about 29 million plus. Now, that doesn't take into consideration cap holds, you know, for um, free agents that we have, uh, nor for our first round pick. Um, so it, it kind of depends, right? If you make tender offers, then your cap, you know, freedom is going to decrease. Um, 
based on where our pick comes in, I believe, you know, right now our pick is at a certain number. And if we move up in the lottery, then it becomes another number. Um, but about 29 million plus would be the number, but it, we expect it to be less than that. Thanks very much. Rod. Hey, Mitch, uh, just wondering, first, um, you mentioned before about ways to kind of build a, a team through the draft and getting lucky to get a player. So you guys got LaMelo Ball. Just wondering, now that you've seen him for a season, um, how important is it for you to kind of, I guess, build around him and just, I guess, how do you go about doing that um, to make sure it's done, done the right way, I guess? Well, that's, that's the job, right? Um, that the basketball department has been given. You know, we've – We've upgraded, I believe, our talent um, in a couple of areas during the offseason. You know, Gordon primarily would be the big upgrade. Um, you know, drafting LaMelo at number three and having, you know, such a promising season, even though it was cut short, um, gives us more clarity on the direction of the franchise. Uh, we still need to add talent. You know, as I just mentioned, you know, our margin of talent – it's not so good that, that we're good enough, you know, to just, you know, assume if there was an injury or a health and safety protocol, you know, that we could carry on like some of the teams in the NBA do. Um, but I do feel that we did upgrade our talent. You know, some of the talent that we had, you know, got better. Um, you know, we do have three picks in the draft. Uh, I bet two of them are going to be in the 50s, but we do have a good pick in the first round, and we've got financial flexibility. Uh, so, so those are all you know avenues we'll look to, but we've still got some work to do, um, you know, to get to the point where we could make the playoffs, and we want to advance in the playoffs. We just don't want to make in the playoffs and, and lose in the first round. We want to build something that's sustainable that, you know, will allow us to, you know, get into the playoffs and advance each year. And then uh, the other thing was you mentioned when we talked to you after the trade deadline that you felt you guys were kind of a little bit ahead of schedule a little bit and that that was partially, I guess, for JB on top of that. You praise him. What do you think about the job he's done this season? And, you know, just, I guess, what do you see about him going forward? Um, you know, the way he's done things for you guys this past couple of years in this season as well. Yeah, at the very at the very top, you know, I commended our staff and our coaching staff, you know, for getting through this season. And you know, he's in charge of the coaching staff. I think he's done a great job. You know, uh, like I said, we did step forward. I thought we made a nice advanced step this year in our progress. Um, you know, we just completed exit interviews with all the players, and you know, despite the you know the ending. Um, everybody, you know, was really upbeat about the season. You know, they love the way we play the game. Uh, they love the pace that we play at. Um, you know, of course, some players want to play more than others. Um, or, or they just want to play more, excuse me. Um, but by and large, you know, uh, everything was positive. And, you know, he's remained hardworking and, you know, positive you know, despite, you know, the health and safety issues and, you know, the injuries that this team, you know, experienced this year. I mean, let's face it. I mean, we did have a lot of ankle sprains, you know, to players. Um, and maybe some of those kinds of things, you know, were soft tissue. We could have, you know, survived and continued to win games at a nice pace. But when you lose, you know, Gordon Haywood for the season, and then you lose, you know, your young player that turned into a pretty effective player before he got hurt. That's a lot to overcome. Uh, so I think the coach did a great job. Thank you. Josh? Mitch, um, you spoke about the playoffs a little bit. What were your thoughts on um, how things went in that playing game and how will that affect the way you shape the roster going forward given kind of the lack of experience, for a better term, you guys had in that playoff game, play-in game? 
Yeah, I think lack of experience you know, had a lot to do with the way that game that game went. Uh, Indiana, you know, they had some experience in the playoffs, and uh, they came out and made shots. You know, it was a home court game for them, which I don't think is the advantage it normally would be. You know, but it was a home court game, and uh, they they really came out. You know, through a roundhouse, and um, our I, I just didn't feel. You know that the understanding that it's do or die, it's the game seven, uh, was there like it needed to be, and I think maybe some of that was due to you know lack of experience. You know, in a seven game series, I think we've all seen you know the game one you could lose by twenty or thirty, and then in game two, you know that team can come back and win that game. You know, and it can be one one after two, but it's not the case you know, in a do or die game or a game like that. Um, and uh, if you're looking for silver linings, I think it was a great learning experience. You know, um, we weren't going to win a championship this year anyway. Um, we were hoping, you know, to advance, you know, get into the playoffs and have that experience. You know, of course, we would have, I believe, ended up playing Philadelphia, which would have been tough, right? We would have loved to have the opportunity. Um, but at some point, you know, you probably were going to go through a learning experience. And if anything, I think that's how I look at that game. Steve? Hey, Mitch. Um... Uh, you know, you talked briefly about the, you know, the center position that seems to be, you know, just from watching that, that you know, that that's that's an area you got to upgrade. What are you looking for, you know, in a center if, if you do go try to find one in free agency? And the second part of that question is, do you feel like you guys will be active in free agency in terms of bringing in outside free agents? Thank you. Well, We'll be active because, you know, we have some financial flexibility. Uh, that doesn't mean, you know, we'll be able to get a player if we choose to pursue a player. Um, but we have the ability to do that. Um, we don't control the destiny of Cody Zeller and Biz. You know, they're both unrestricted. So, you know, that is an area that, that may need to be addressed. You know, we do have two young players that did not play much this year and you did not see them play much, except maybe if you watched the G league a little bit, and that would be Nick Richards and Vern Carey. So to say that that's going to be our center core next year. Yeah, that's a stretch. Okay. But we will be monitoring, you know, their progress. Um, the draft is not until the end of July and free agency is not until in the beginning of August. So that's another area that we could, you know, look to and monitor for the next two, two and a half months.